Yo, welcome back to Kemp Fitness Professional. I'm John and I'm documenting my extended fast via vlog. So this is the first time I've done a video blog of one of my fasts. That'd be a cool way to share with you guys the experience of fasting and give you guys a little bit of knowledge and wisdom, knowledge being information and research, wisdom being the practical application that I have used in the past. So that way you can take this and uh, possibly use it as reference for a fast that you might do in the future. I'm a big advocate of fasting. I have been intermittent fasting since 2013, so about six years now almost. And um, that's the 16 hours off, eight hours on protocol, where you essentially fast for 16 hours every day, and then you eat all the food that you're going to consume for the day within eight hours. So it's basically the same thing as what everyone does already, except you just skip breakfast. That's like basically it. Um, what I'm doing now is an extended fast. So essentially, I'm not consuming any calories whatsoever for multiple days in a row. So this is more of like what you would hear of as traditional fasting in historical, cultural, or religious senses. I'm not doing it for any kind of specific purpose other than intuitively, whenever I feel like it's a good time to fast, I will do so. And I periodically fast for a minimum of three days, about every two to three months. And again, like I said, there's no specific regimen. For me, it's just all intuitive based. My body feels good and it doesn't feel hungry. So I incorporate fasting. Why would I deprive myself of beautiful mother nature's abundant gift of food? Because of the benefits physiologically that fasting has for the body. So you can just Google search autophagy which basically will give you like a long laundry list of things that the body does when it is in a state of fasting. And so you basically go through the body and recycle and reuse any wasted materials or foreign invaders, pathogens, old cells. Your body goes in and breaks down those old cells, those unnecessary cells, and utilizes them for energy. Since you're not giving it a source of energy, it has to find a way to get things done. And so it goes through the body and breaks down old cells and bad cells, cancerous cells, and uses that material to uh, keep the system running. So not only is autophagy good for breaking down old bad cells and also clearing out a bunch of the junk, but there's also a bunch of neuroprotective benefits that go along with fasting. So again, if you want more of the details, you guys can research that stuff pretty easily. I could give you uh, some good references. For example, there's a documentary called The Science of Fasting, I believe is what it's called. It's on Amazon Prime for free, but it's a documentary about uh, five or six decades of research that came out from Russia recently. And it's all about case studies related to uh, medical research using fasting to cure a slew of different diseases. So really interesting documentary and there's a whole lot more information on fasting. I've been doing it for a really long time as far as researching the benefits, but that's just a quick breakdown of fasting. Essentially, it's really good for keeping your body young and healthy and going through and making sure that it's cleaning out any stuff that doesn't necessarily need to be there. So that's one of the physiological main benefits of why I like to periodically fast. You could just say fasting is one of the keys to youth, if you will. It keeps you young and it keeps you healthy. So um, there's a bunch of other benefits too, but that's one of the main reasons why I do it. 
And also too, it's definitely a mental challenge because you're not eating and it's especially when you first start fasting, it's a mind trip. There is so much conditioning that we get stuffed down our throats from such a young age through advertising about how we basically need to buy everybody's shit and that includes food. And so it's really interesting when you start fasting. I've had this experience with clients and colleagues where they hit me up and have a conversation like, wow, I didn't realize I don't get very hungry after two to three days without eating and my energy levels are still really good. But for my whole life, everyone's told me that you have to eat every two hours to stoke the metabolism or blah, 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 blah. But essentially, it's really interesting how if the body is in a healthy state already, a lot of prerequisites there, right? We have to make sure that nutrient density is high, that we don't have any major deficiencies, that physiologically the system is functioning well, just like if a car needed to go in for an oil change really badly, you were already past due, and then you didn't give it oil for another week, that's probably not as good of an idea as if you just got a good oil change, the car is running really well, and you can go a little while without that oil. It's a rough analogy, but you get the idea. So essentially, you want to be prepared for a fast mentally and physically before undergoing an extended fast. Um, intermittent fasting is a great place to start. I usually will do 12 or 14 hour fast with my clients because while you're sleeping, you're fasting, right? You're not eating breakfast, break the fast. So you already got eight hours down from the night before. So another four hours and you're already getting at least a little bit more of an extension on your fasting window and encouraging the uh, upregulation of autophagy. So you can start with the daily intermittent fasting, or you can also research alternate day fasting. That's another really good protocol that I recommend, especially for people that are overweight, looking to lose weight and or have no fasting experience, where essentially you eat normal on day A, and then on day B, you do not eat until dinner time, and then you have a small 500 to 750 calorie dinner, roughly. So basically a few eggs with some greens, right? Like a nice little salad or something like that. So that's day B, and then you alternate back to day A, eat totally normal, didn't even think about it. Day B, eat just your dinner meal. And they showed even by creating a calorie surplus equivalent to the deficit for day B, so it would be even with the control group that ate the same amount of calories every day, the fasting group that did the alternate day fasting of eating normal on day A, actually in a surplus to make up for the deficit of calories on day B, where they only ate the 750 at dinner, they actually still lost more weight and they retained more lean body mass than those that went on a calorie deficit diet with a steady uh, regulation of calories from day to day. So that's another benefit of fasting is A, it improves insulin sensitivity. So your body's ability to utilize glucose, to utilize carbohydrates is improved and it keeps resting blood sugars, resting blood sugar levels lower. So that's going to help your body. Um, it's going to help you prevent storing fat and obviously all the other uh, physiological factors related to elevated resting blood glucose levels. So, um, yeah, retention of lean body mass is another big reason to fast. And I can't give you all the specific details on all this stuff because I don't know them, especially off the top of my head. I've researched a lot of this stuff before, but uh, absorb what is useful, discard what is not, add what is uniquely your own, and keep it relevant for what you're learning at the current point in time. I know that a lot of the stuff that I've learned and digested and utilized has become secondhand nature. That's why I rely on my intuition. I don't need to know all the little details. All I need to know is what feels best for me. So getting back on track, I digress. The uh, protocol that I'm following right now, the extended fast, is just water, essentially. And one of the main reasons I'm doing this fast, actually, is because I want to take a seven-day break from caffeine stimulants in general, um, mainly coffee. 
mainly caffeine and coffee. I will still be drinking kombucha possibly later in the fast. I'll keep you guys posted on that. Maybe not. But um, I will definitely break my fast with kombucha at the end of this to get some healthy bacteria back into my gut that I may lose through the fasting process because I'm not putting anything in. I'm not getting any um, uh, support to the the castle, the microbiome. So I want to make sure that I'm repopulating my healthy gut bacteria immediately following this fast. So I have my own homemade kombucha that I will be drinking post fast. But um, yeah, uh, this fast is mainly because I want to challenge myself mentally. And I also have a lot of work to do this week. So that's the nice thing about fasting is when you're really busy, as long as you're not doing something that's requiring a high level of physical activity, the time that it takes to cook your food and eat your food and go shop for your food and come home, drive home and unpack your food and digest your food takes a lot of time. It takes a lot more time than you would think until you stop eating. And then you're like, holy crap, I actually don't feel more tired, but I've got another two hours a day. And so, especially when you first start, you are like all kind of nervous and or anxious and you think about eating a lot. So you like really distract yourself by like cleaning the house. The first time I did my first extended fast, I cleaned the whole fucking house. And then I still had like two more hours at the end of the day. I'm like, fuck, what do I do? I just want to eat, you know, but it's just conditioning of the mind. And so that's a big part of fasting is uh, training yourself to uh, overcome adversity and, um, you know, work with what you've got. And uh, so I've never done anything over a four and a half day fast. I've done a water fast for 108 hours, I think was my best. And uh, it was prior to my uh, yoga trip to India last June. And uh, I really would like to go seven days. So that's my goal with this fast. I'm trying to go seven days and um, just drinking water. I will likely add vitamins and uh, a greens powder depending on how I'm feeling over the next few days. So that's usually what I do. I incorporate a whole food multivitamin and a greens powder that has really low calories but really high nutrients. So that way I still have really good energy and I'm still getting the um, micronutrients in my body that will help me to physiologically carry out all the processes to make sure that I'm functioning at my best. But I'm kind of thinking I might push this one a little bit more and go just strictly water and nothing else just to see what my body is capable of, what my mind is capable of. So um, today was day one and I actually did a dry fast today, which means no water and no food. So This is a more intense protocol that I do not recommend for anyone. I don't even care if you're an experienced fasting person like myself. I am not going to um, personally advocate for dry fasting because there's a lot of variables to consider. And without knowing each individual case by case situation, there's no way I can give um, good recommendations. Uh, So... Uh, do your research on dry fasting and only do it if you have previous experience with water fasting, extended fasting. But sorry, I keep looking at my time because I only have 15 minutes of space. And uh, so I will give you guys more information on dry fasting tomorrow. But that's my intro to the vlog here to give you guys just kind of a a background about fasting, why I do it, what it's good for, and what my plan is for this upcoming fast that I will be vlogging for you guys. So day one in the books, I'm 25 hours in as of right now with a dry fast, not a drop of water today. I didn't even take a shower. So that's a dry, dry fast, which I'll also, I'll talk more about that in the next video. But, um, It's been a success. The only feedback I have from today is I got a couple very, very slight um, 
moments of dry mouth and dry throat where I was a little thirsty, but that was it. Nothing big. I didn't exercise today. I kept it low key. I worked all day in the, in the office. And, uh, the only thing as far as feedback wise was I had a small dip in energy from two or 3 PM till about 5 PM. And then I laid down for a 30 minute meditative rest, just doing deep belly breathing. And I felt amazing after that, totally fine for the rest of the evening. So I'm going to go to bed now, get about eight hours of sleep, and then I will wake up and give you guys an update tomorrow. Peace.